want to say a special welcome to all of you to our virtual Bible study. Glad to have you along with us. Hope you've had a wonderful week thus far. We've got a very special word from the scriptures and a lot of scriptures to share uh, about how we can be even more effective in experiencing miracles and blessings and answers to prayer. It's all around that word, faith. I hope you'll stay with us. I think you're going to enjoy it. we got some great praise and worship. Brother Dana Saray and the team is here. And, of course, our prayer ministry is here for you. Always at the end of the day about praying, tapping into that miraculous gift that God gave us all because when we pray, God listens. If you would love to get your prayer request in, it's always a thrill to receive those. It just is so energizing to have the privilege to pray for wonderful people like you. To get your prayer request in, you can use the Facebook option by doing the send message or the comment section. You can also use the YouTube chat section option as well. Either one of those will work just fine. Once again, Facebook or YouTube, we'd love to have your prayer request. And we're going to come into agreement that the Lord is going to do something special. You'll be given a word of encouragement. You know, God's word is always on time. No matter when I read the Word of God or I scroll it on my phone or my device, it's always on time. I believe God has an on-time Word for you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to serve, to serve you. Lord, to be able to learn from the greatest book that was ever given to mankind, that's God on the page is the Word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for a tremendous time of worship, of prayer, and word for the Wednesday virtual Bible study. By faith we receive it, by faith we call it done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Let's have a great time together for the Wednesday virtual Our Power. Hey, let's sing the song. Come on, give me the bass, Jay. One, two, three. Just hey. clap your hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just clap your hands. Love your hands.
Absolutely on time, 100%. If you can help me, brother, just a little bit here. Uh, the theme that we're going with, the next theme is believe. 
It's a powerful thing. Believe. Look at that. And there's Brother Dana, Sister Dana girl, saying if you can just believe, all things are possible. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Believe. And friend, I know that many of you watching right now, you might be going through some this, that, and the other. Might have been some distractions in your life. Maybe things not rolling like you want them to. But I'm going to tell you, nothing takes God by surprise. God is always there. He's always faithful. And he is ready to help you right now. I love those words, right now. Would it be okay, Brother Leonard, if we brought up the theme one more time? Believe somebody might have just uh, uh, joined us here in the Bible study, the virtual Bible study. Believe. And I know it's just one word, but sometimes they say less is more. Not only in Hebrews 11 does it say we need faith to believe, or we need to believe in the faith we have, but Jesus said in Mark 9 and 23, if you can believe, all things are possible. So we're going to get ready to pray, because I just know by faith that you're going to choose to believe. I'm looking back over my life and the different things and chapters of it, and there were times that I had to choose to believe. Brother Brett, I had to choose to believe. My flesh didn't want to. My flesh wanted to do this, that, and the other wanted to react. But you know what? I had to believe that God was over it all, and somehow I was going to get on the other side of it. Are you ready to believe? I'm going to ask Brother Harmon if he would come at this time with every prayer request that we have thus far. And we're going to believe. Believe with you. The many of you that are watching right now, we're going to believe with you for that miracle, for whatever you need in your life in the name of Jesus, that God is going to come through for you. Because we know that he is able and that he will. Brother Harmon, how you doing, man? How you been feeling? Doing good. How's the outreach doing at Faith City? Oh, it's going to the next level. To the next out here we have another outreach coming up i think on uh, uh pine street or something we're going to do some type of memorial well tell us a little bit about that initiative we're going to do eighth and pine as a uh, young man he was only 40 years old but that was the uh race that he ran he had a 40-year race he ran it well he uh, touched a lot of hearts out there so it's a lot of people will carry on that legacy and uh, one thing i like about him is he was a Dallas Cowboy fan. So we're gonna do a Dallas Cowboy theme balloon release. So if you like me and you like the Cowboys, let's give a shout out. Now, Brother Harmon, we've been together a long time. I didn't know that was gonna come out of the box, but I know the Lord will forgive you, amen. But yeah, we're looking forward to that upcoming outreach. You might say, now who's that brother next to you? He, he's a brother, Brother Charles Harmon, the outreach director here at Faith City Family Church. Give it up for him, praise God. We've been running this race, race together quite a long time. And, and you're going to be seeing a little bit. Don't you go anywhere. i got to show you some street footage. I think it's really going to bless you, really going to challenge you, so forth and so on. So, Brother Charlie, what you got here, man? Let's take a look. All right. Thank you, sir. So we got, we're starting out here with some praise. So it says, a praise report. It's testimony time, like we like to say. I want to give God praise for bringing my brother through a brain operation. I know the doctor operated, uh, but God did the miracle. Boy, I like how they put that together, how they said that. I know the doctor did the operating, but God did the miracle. He is walking and talking, and the man's doing great. How about a praise God? That, that is a real encourager right there. That makes you want to believe for miracles. And here's this from a Sheila. She said, I got a praise report. Uh, she said, I want to thank the church, Faith City, uh, for the prayer and all the prayer warriors. Ronald Martin, that you've been praying for, he's turning around. He's regaining his strength. And we are trusting and believing God that there's even more for him. Amen to that. Ashley. Oh, wow. This is pretty amazing. you got to check this out like they all are. So Ashley, I, I know Ashley. We know Ashley. Ashley comes to church here. And she had to have like major brain surgery. Got to check this out. I just want to thank God for what he has done. I am officially one year past op uh, post-op. I'm year, one year post-op past my brain surgery. And I'm here to tell my story. What's meant for bad, God can turn it into good. Because God is good. 
She goes, I lift my children, my mother, brother, and those I love up to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Ashley, and you'll be my witnesses. Ashley, usually when she comes, sits over here in the church on Sundays. When the girl walks in, honestly, it's like nothing happened. Isn't that right, Brother Homer? Like nothing happened. She's laughing. She's got strength and all that. And I prayed with her two days. I'll never forget that. It was raining hard. I was on the phone with Ashley. I think it was the day before the big brain surgery. We talked. We hung out on the phone a while. We prayed together. She had such peace. The reason I'm telling you this is because somebody's watching right now, and you're in the fight of your life. You're in the fight of your life. But what God did for Ashley, I believe that God can do for you. I believe that God can bring you through it. That's why you get that prayer request, and we're going to pray for you. Katrina said, pray for my boyfriend, Zach, for victory. He's got some struggles in his life. It says, pray for a sister, Needle, to be released from the hospital, and she needs healing in the name of Jesus. Tisha, I'm asking for prayers. I need financial breakthrough and blessing in my life. Uh, Paul, a testimony. Uh, he said, I thank God that my friend who had surgery, uh, it went well. And they were worried that they were going to find cancer. They found absolutely no cancer in the man's body. Praise God Almighty. Somebody shout. I can hear you by faith on the other side of these cameras right now. Daniel says, pray for an ex-daughter-in-law. Pray for my wife, he says. And pray for health problems as well. Francis, she said, I need special prayer for Rob. I'm praying for healing from addiction for Norm. And I just want to say I thank God in advance for healing my son. You talk about faith. Uh, this came in from Reach Gospel Radio Marie. Please pray for my brother and sister uh, and that the Lord will be with them as they are missionaries ministering to children. Jekiah, Jekiah, please pray for my dad, Joy, uh, from my dad, Jay, forgive me. Jay Lewis, he needs a liver. He is very ill. My God, we're going to believe for a healing. For him, Belinda says, uh, please remember Harry, Henry Simmons uh, passed out while in the city of Baltimore. He's on life support. Wow. You see how suddenly we can be here and be in a life-threatening situation. But God's bigger than all of it. Brother Harmon's coming right now with the anointing oil. And we're going to believe and we're going to trust God as we touch these, as we agree in prayer. And then we're going to pray for you after we do that. But if you would agree with us in prayer... We would be so absolutely grateful because the way to get blessed is to be willing to be a blessing yourself to somebody else. And so the Bible said if just two or three agree, but there's way more than that. Thank you, Brother Harmon. And we're going to ask uh, Sister Dana, if she would, to agree with us. We do that every Wednesday. We come into the Bible circle of agreement. Father, in the name of Jesus, myself, Sister Dana, Brother Harmon. We anoint these. God, here is a man fighting for his life. He needs a liver. Now, Lord, we're thankful for medical science. Liver transplants are very successful. Kidney transplants are very successful. God, if you choose to work that way, we leave that in your hands. But, God, we have enough faith to believe that the liver can be healed, can be restored. You made it. We ask you to heal it and fix it in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, for all these other requests and the praise reports to encourage the brain surgery, Ashley looking amazing, feeling amazing, now ministering and praying for others here at the church. God, we want to thank you and praise you for the brother. No cancer in his body. He must be leaping for joy, running around, shouting. I would, I know I would be myself. God, we thank you. Now, if you did it for those, please do it for all these other people that need situations resolved sickness is addressed in the name of Jesus we pray hallelujah God we thank you Jay Lewis we speak to your liver brother we speak into it be restored in Jesus name we pray thank you Lord now we're gonna stretch our hands out to you sister Dana brother Harmon myself father in Jesus name there's a lot of needs we know right now people are hurting somebody you are watching this tears coming down your face it's been very compressed there's the word it's been a compressed time for you it's like everything kind of going left but i'm here to tell you when everything's going left jesus knows how to do what's right and i'm praying right now that the lord will deliver you 
He will encourage you. He will do some amazing things for you in your life where you're going to say, wow, I've got such an opportunity to testify and tell people what the Lord has done. We pray that the Lord will work in your family, in your relationships, in your finances, in every aspect and dimension of your life. We agree in prayer, myself, Sister Dana, Brother Harmon, everybody, the staff, the team here right now, we are praying for miracles. And listen, I feel led to say this. I believe within the next 48 hours or less, you're going to be able to send us not a prayer request. You can if you want to. But I believe you're going to be sending us a praise report. Sister April, be looking for them. Be looking for them. Praise reports by faith in the name of Jesus because we did what the Bible said. We agreed in prayer for the miracle and the turnaround. Now we want to pray the prayer of salvation. Why is it so important to do that? Many of us were still in a state of shock. What we saw happen in our country in Texas at that school. God help all the families. God comfort them all. It's beyond, it's beyond words. But I tell you what it does. It reminds us that we need to be ready for eternity because we never know when it is our final day. I'm not saying that to bring you down. I'm saying that to keep it real. And let me tell you, this blessed me. I shared this on Sunday. I want to get, get her name here. It's right here in my, yes, Sherelle. I'm going to share this one more time. Sherelle's been coming to the church. Now, get this. She watches us online. She drives all the way from Marlton, New Jersey. Charlie, you're from Jersey. You're from Atlantic City, all right? You know all about Marlton's about a 40-minute drive. I've been there a gazillion times myself. She comes to church. But this particular Sunday, last Sunday, she felt something. She just felt uneasy. She felt she needed to make sure she was right with God. Got in the car. Brother Brett drove 40 minutes one way, 40 minutes. She was late, but she said, I'm going to wait till everybody's done. Sister April, you helped. Others help. She went over in that corner over there. I believe we have a picture of it. Might be able to share it to this time. And this young lady in the corner of the church cried. Sister April brought her a box, a little, little thing of handkerchief. She had a pray-through moment. She received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior last Sunday. She waited. Give God a praise. Drove 40 minutes one way. Let me tell you, that's how important that it is. If it was important for Sherelle, it's important for me, it's important for Brother Harmon, Sister Dana, it's important for every single one of us. So can we, all of us here, can we invite you to do what Sherelle did? I want to invite you to do exactly what Sherelle did. Thank you for bringing up that verse. For whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, yes, they shall be saved. Pray this prayer with us. I'm going to ask Sister Dana to say it on the mic. Also, Brother Dana as well. If one soul is saved, it's worth everything. Are you ready? Come on, say it with me. Say, by faith I believe, faith I believe. that you died on the cross, Jesus, for all of my sins. I know hell is real. I know heaven is real. I'm not interested in hell. I want to make it to heaven. And I want to have some heaven. Before I get there, I want to help other people get to heaven too. So right now, I confess all the sin in my life. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask you to wash my sin away, to come into my life, to save my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. How about another praise God? Isn't Jesus awesome? Isn't he wonderful? And I want to say thank you, Brother Harmon, for praying. I want to thank you, Sister Dana. I want to thank you as well. I want to thank all the musicians and all of the team here. So as I was saying a couple minutes ago, I want to get ready in a couple minutes to take you out on the street with us because just this past Sunday, we launched, we did the official launch of the summer of salvation we call it s o s you know what brother al you know we think we, we talk a little bit later brother we need to uh let's get a graphic done for that s o s because this past sunday when i was greeting people in the refreshment area and after the baby dedications it was awesome taking pictures and all that that s o s was res resonating a lot of people visitors never heard of such a thing the summer of salvation is basically this 
we make the decision we don't stay inside the church building. Oh, yes, we have services, as the Bible commands us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Yes, we stream online. But we also answer the other aspect of the call of the gospel, which is Luke 14 and 23. And Jesus said, go out into the highways and the streets and compel them. The summer of salvation. Well, some of you remember, this was about a year ago now, that we received a very unsettling phone call that an area that we minister to, we're not strangers to, people that we love, we care about, well, one of the families, their daughter, was walking the street. She wasn't in a fight. It wasn't an altercation. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. She's walking down the street, and a stray bullet takes her out. Wow. Pretty heavy. Left behind a little cute little girl. Of course, her mom, her family, all that. And that whole neighborhood, Brother Harmon shared this with me, that whole neighborhood was like besieged with fear. Well, why wouldn't it be? I mean, you live in a, in a house and somebody 25 feet away, there's still bloodstains on the ground. And fear tried to take over the neighborhood just to basically say, you know what, this neighborhood is done. No neighborhood is done. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all that dwelleth therein. I said, no neighborhood is done. Because there's a Jesus. And there's a cross. And as I've said for years, the cross changes the atmosphere. So go with us on the streets. We went in there with an outreach. Not just laying stuff on the street. And that's a beautiful thing. But you got to get people saved, man. You've got to get the inside full of God's peace. And so... Showed up there, did a beautiful setup there, did the cross on the corner. Gospel music was beginning to play. People were beginning to come out slowly, but they kept coming and coming and coming. And praise God, would you know it, after a while, there was quite a host of people there. The team that was there under the direction of Brother Harmon put together in love a wall of memory, a wall of remembrance to honor this young lady and to try to bring some semblance of comfort and peace and hope to this neighborhood and this community. Isn't that beautiful? How touching that is. Memories, memories. The team went to ask mom, are you ready to come down to the corner for the service? The mother came out, a few steps overwhelmed, overcame with grief, our dear sisters, Walked with her one step at a time, prayed with her. See, this is the work of the gospel, folks. Oh, there's the daughter. There's the other family members. Pictures on the wall of remembrance. My, my, my. How sad. What a loss. And then we began to share the gospel message over the sound system. And I'd done a sermon while I was preaching there, Mom. In her grief, this always grabs me when I see it every time, touches that child's picture, kisses that child's picture. Those of us that are parents, we, we kind of feel something every time we see this. And But God was working. God's always working. And people on that corner prayed Jesus into their heart. Just like I gave the altar call, I didn't, I didn't change any words. It did just like that. And people out loud gave their lives to Jesus. While people kept hanging around, loved ones, family members, being there for one another. There's power in connection and fellowship. And many that gave their hearts to the Lord, we, I always do this. I say, if you want to sign your name on the cross, you don't have to. But if it would be in remembrance of your salvation, do it. And quite a number of them signed that cross. And yeah, in just a moment, even mom signed that cross. We feel here at Faith City Family Church that we must go to the people and give the people love, encouragement, and hope. People we've never met before. People you've never met before. But that's, that was the Jesus model. The people are hurting. They need help and they need hope. The Summer of Salvation is now officially launched, and we are asking I asked the first time Sunday for 
Summer of Salvation Difference Makers to help us with that initiative. And I pray that you will pray about, above your tithes and offerings, about doing that. We are still, we, 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 did, we did pretty well on Sunday, uh, and, and we know that because of online, things are constantly in motion and wheels are turning. 57 difference makers was the need. And we cut into that pretty well on Sunday. But we're not all the way there yet. So if you would pray about, if you're able to do it, giving that SOS, Summer of Salvation offering of $100, if you could do that, we'd be grateful. If you can't, please do the best you can. And remember, our tithing is a covenant that gets us through the struggling times. Malachi 3, verse 10, God said, if you do this, I'll do that. It's another way of reading it in this way. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. But he said, that's not all. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When we look at the paycheck and say, God, well, I couldn't get out of bed. I can't even show to turn the clock to make the money. I didn't get lucky. You gave me another day. Thank you. We give God 10% of that. And he said, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to bless you, I'm going to increase you, and I'm going to protect you. When you tithe, everything connected to you benefits. And so we're going to pray in just a moment. Pray that we can get some more SOS, Summer of Salvation, friends that will do that special $100. All throughout the summer, by the grace of God, I announce it by faith. I've always announced it by faith. I remember over the years announcing, we're going to do a 1,000 backpacks. Didn't have a dime. Always got done. Didn't always get done. Always got done. Always happened. Buses always got paid. Drivers got paid. Insurance got paid. We're still here, and now more than ever, wow, the world needs Jesus. For I pray you can give like this. These are all safe and secure options. You can go to 302-455-2820. Safely and securely give your tithes and SOS, Summer of Salvation Offerings. The Cash App option is very popular as well. Dollar sign, Faith City FC2, lower uppercase doesn't matter. Also, you can download, and we pray that you will. It'll bless you. The app of Faith City's app, Apple or Android device, and faithcitynow.com, the church website, Simply click on the word donate, and you can give that way. You can join the others by mail. If you'd like to give it by mail, send in uh, your gifts by mail, your SOS offerings, your tithes to 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. That's why I'm coming to you. We're coming to you right now from Faith City Family Church. Would you be the one, be one of the ones will bring change to streets and neighborhoods and families this summer. Be the one. Do it by faith. Maybe you've never seen anything like this before. I know this past Sunday, people were getting a lot of visitors at the church. I've never seen outreach like this. I've never been to a church. Try it, and I promise you that God will bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the wonderful time we're having together thus far. Thank you, Lord, for the singing, the praise, the worship. Thank you, Lord, that we can pray for one another. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the healing power that's going through these cameras right now, the salvation power, the joy power, all the power that is needed in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that many will say, you know what? I'm going to be part of this. SOS, Summer of Salvation, we need it. God, give us a blessing. We pray and give it back to the people, pressed down, shaken together and running over. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can I say thank you? Thank you. God uses people to help people. Thank him for letting him use you. I'll be back in just a few moments.
to all of you we want to say a sincere heartfelt and respectful thank you every life that is helped every soul that is saved you share in the part of that and we are eternally grateful to you I want to thank the marvelous team that is here I want to thank Brett Baker on the audio appreciate him love you brother thank God for you I want to thank we affectionately call him BK Brian Atkins for the amazing video and camera and shots and all of that kind of thing of production I want to thank brother Al Wolfo for digital media I want to thank all these amazing musicians that are up here I want to thank everybody because with, without a team God's dream doesn't happen sister Pernell sister Catherine and, and, and everyone it takes a team for the dream for Jesus just before we get into the bread of life and I know this time goes so quickly we want to make sure that you are aware that June very important month of giving encouragement honor and recognition to all graduates if you are graduating from anything and this is for little kids this is for adult anybody we believe that we should cheer people on when they do well it's called encouragement that's what the Bible calls it so would you do this email a picture of yourself your name the name of your school to faithcityconnect at gmail.com what's what are we going to do with that we're going to put it up on screens we're going to call out names during the Sundays of June and your picture comes up your name comes up the name of your school people clap they applaud it encourages other people and we're going to give you a beautiful graduation gift would you do that yeah I know life is busy but maybe if you just want to do it maybe after we're done here knock it out all right picture of yourself your name name of your school faith city connect gmail.com and then the last thing I wanted to share was Father's Day God honor dad the Bible said honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth unto thee in person or online we're going to have gifts for all the dads we're going to have a special presentation to all of the dads that is sunday june the 19th and we hope that you can be with us whether in person or online if i could add one more thing i'll just add this that the church is open and i know that many people know that but still i'll run into people when i'm out and about i'm always running into people and they'll say pastor is the church open and I'm always saying yeah we never close praise God so we are open Sundays 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in person in your car in the church parking lot online as well Wednesday at 7 is virtual Now, the message the Lord laid on my heart to share in this time that we have together in our virtual Bible study is this here it is understanding the kind of faith that works understanding the kind of faith that works I'm going to share with you five amazing things all with scriptures anything I've ever shared we always have the Bible to back it up now here's what's exciting to think that every one of us have faith every one of us everybody here right now myself you the Bible said to every man and woman is given the measure of faith so you have faith but it's kind of like okay I got a key to my car today all right when I'm done out in the parking lot I have some wheels I have a key that can take me anywhere I go but if I don't use the key effectively and correctly and appropriately if I don't follow the formula I won't be able to get the transportation I won't be able to get the outcome the Bible teaches us that faith has a formula faith has an outcome faith has a model and procedures that God set up so that we can live a blessed life let's dig into this together with our theme verse is Hebrews 11 verse number six but without faith it is impossible to please him to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and so God is happy when we use our faith we can't even please God unless we use this thing that he has given us 
faith, and we have to do it in a diligent manner because a lot of times I'll pray in faith and things get worse. Sometimes we'll seek God more and the devil attacks more. But the key is, is that we hang in there. He is the rewarder of them that diligently, with diligence, seek and keep the faith. Let's go to five truths together here. Truth number one. We'll need to understand this about faith, that faith is this. And if we can get number one, we can get the rest, the other four. Faith is first believing, even when I can't see it. There are some people, when it comes to the spiritual dynamic of learning how to do that, it's hard for them. It's difficult for them. But, you know, it's kind of like back to the illustration of the vehicle, the car, that we put our, enough faith in a big bucket full of bolts that if we walk to it and we do certain things, it will start and it will take us somewhere. Think of all the times. I know over the years I've had breakdowns. There's times I went to that vehicle, it let me down. It let me down. There's time I've gotten in there, I could tell by the sound the battery was about gone. But it didn't mean that I gave up the faith of believing that that vehicle can eventually get me somewhere. So if I can put faith in something to take me somewhere that is man-made, faith is first believing when I can't see it. I can apply that principle, that life principle to say, you know, I prayed and it seems like I feel worse. I prayed, they're acting up even worse. I prayed and the, the money's even tighter. I prayed, but you know what? We don't go by feeling. That's where we slip up. The Bible said that the just will live by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Faith is this. This is the Bible definition of faith. It's the substance of things you hope for. What are you, what are you hoping for? I know I'm hoping for some things to happen in my life, and I've been hoping for some of them for a long time. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence, the evidence of things not seen. So my faith is the evidence of things I haven't seen yet. To the world, radically crazy. But in the spiritual realm of God and his word, that's how faith works. So that means it's okay for me to say, even though it's not manifested in my life where I can see it, I can touch it, or I can feel it, in faith I'm going to call it done. Because the Bible said that God would supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I may not have the cash in my account yet. I may not have it in my hand. But praise God, I've got it in my heart. And that's where it begins. If I can believe it, I can receive it because number one, faith is first believing when I can't see it. Number two, faith is still obeying. Oh man, this takes maturity. Faith is still obeying even when I don't understand it. Don't mind being transparent with you. I think of all the times in my life I was doing what the Bible said. I felt I was keeping my hand to the plow. I felt that I had a sincere heart, but everything was going left. It was going in the opposite direction, and I could not figure it out. Well, guess what? Can I be so honest with you to say this? There's a lot of things in this life's journey you are not going to figure out. Just deal with it. There are things that happened in my life. I, did, I couldn't figure it totally out. But guess what I did? I said, you know what? I'm going to keep my faith in God. I'm going to obey God. And even though it seems like my hands to the plow and I'm taking steps forward and I'm getting pushed back and it's difficult, that's all right because my faith is still intact. I know that on the other side of this, God has the ability to restore unto me everything that I ever lost in my life. I know on the other side of this, God has provision. He has healing. He has blessing. He has favor. And get this, on the other side of this, he even has the ability in Joel, the second chapter, to restore unto you and me the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten. So number one, faith is first believing when I can't see it. Number two, faith is still obeying when I don't even understand it. Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith. No, we didn't understand. Being warned of God. I've warned of God of things not seen as of yet. Remember, he had never been a flood yet. Move with fear, prepared an ark. Noah never built a boat, never been in a flood. But by faith, he prepared an ark. 
to save his family, by the which he condemned the world, became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So no wonder he was the laughing stock of his town. God said, I'm going to flood the earth. Really? We've never seen that happen. How would you handle it if I said to you, I had a vision, Pastor here had a vision, and the whole planet's going to get flooded, all of it, not just this country, all of it. You might scratch your head and say, did he eat lunch? You better get him something to drink, whatever. But let me tell you, when you operate in the realm of faith, sometimes God will test and stretch your faith. I've had God tell me years ago, and that's why you got to be careful who you share your vision with. Years ago, on the radio side of the ministry, God speaks some things in my spirit about large markets and large coverage and this kind of thing. And I, I remember one time I really got discouraged because I was just in the vision stage and somebody was literally like laughing at me like I was a fool. You know what? I'm glad I didn't listen to the laugh. I'm glad I listened to the voice of faith in my heart because you know what? If you'll stick with God and you'll stick with faith, God can allow things to happen in your life that you never thought was possible. Can I get a shout from somebody right now? I'm talking about understanding the the kind of faith that works. Number one, faith is first believing when I can't see it. Number two of five, faith is still obeying when I don't understand it. Number three of five, faith is giving even when I don't have it. Please don't just think about money on this one. Money's a piece of it because, you know, if you're going to help somebody, sometimes it involves the exchange of money. People don't have groceries. It costs money to get them the food that the family doesn't eat. They need fuel for the car. It takes money. But real faith is saying, God, I'm in a lean time. Anybody can help somebody when you got an extra $500 hanging out of your wallet or your pocketbook. But can you by faith give, just like an SOS offering or anything else, can you give to somebody when you don't know exactly how you might be able to make it yourself. Trust me, when you sow, I've seen this ministry sow to help other people. I've seen this ministry sow to help bury other people and families could not even pay for the funeral expense. I have seen this ministry sow in some of our toughest times when we're trying to do outreaches. But guess what? Every single time God came through, can I hear an amen right now? Because you cannot outgive God when you give. It is a seed. And the Lord said he'll take that seed and it will come back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Hebrews 11.4. By faith Abel, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice that, than Cain. The Bible said he did it by faith, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and even though when he had passed, yet his giving still followed after him. Here I am over 2,000 to some years later talking about some guy, Abel, because he obeyed God and he gave when God told him to give. When God gives you an opportunity to give up your time to tutor somebody or to help somebody with some information that they need to excel, whatever you give out, it will come back to you. And then truth number four about understanding the kind of faith that works. Oh, this is a critical one. Faith is persisting. My favorite word is here, anyway. Faith is persisting anyway when I don't feel like it. Is anybody in an anyway moment? Anybody ever get in an anyway? I preached anyway. Wasn't feeling well, but went on anyway. Uh, trusted God anyway. Just kept my head up and praising the Lord hurting on the inside, but it went on anyway. Let me tell you, when you persist, you are getting into the zone of miracles and breakthrough because if you're not weary and well-doing, you will reap if you faint not. Hebrews 11 verse 27 says this, by faith, oh, you know who this is, don't you? By faith, Moses forsook Egypt not even fearing the wrath of the king Pharaoh, for he endured, he endured, he persisted as seeing God who is invisible. Moses left a house full of wealth. He was an adopted kid to the king. God said, this is not for you. I got another plan for you. 
And by faith, he went to the king three times and said, let my people go. I call that persistence. The first time, he's laughed off. The second time, he's off in his mind. The third time, he said, I'm warning you, let my people go. The plagues start to come. All of a sudden, they find out this young guy, Moses, has got some juice in his faith, and he is serving the true and the living God. Whatever you're going through, keep your hand to the plow and persist because God has your Red Sea moment. God will part the waters for you, but what you have to do, you got to keep your hand to that plow and keep persisting. And then finally, truth number four five as our musicians are coming faith is thanking God even before I receive the blessing this is where you might lose a, some of some of your friends they might say oh you know he's just a little bit radical I heard him he was praising God for the new job and he he hadn't got an offer back after 11 interviews in a year and he's going around praising God he's going to get a new job but that's how faith operates faith is thanking God before we receive it listen if I have to have it in my hand to have faith then I don't need faith let me tell you if there's a trunk full of money somewhere around here and we want to do an outreach and I say brother Harmon just go lift up the lid get what you need where do you need the faith but when you launch out in faith you do not have what you need in the moment, then you are able to say, God, I want to thank you. I want to praise you because whatever God assigns you to do, God will back it up. Can I hear an amen? Hebrews 11, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. You remember that story of Jericho? A lot of people won't focus on this verse, but they'll shout and holler when the falls, walls came down. But the walls came down by faith because they had to march around and nothing happened day after day after day. And the people read your scripture history on it. They stood over the walls looking down on them, laughing at them, saying, look at these crazy followers of Jehovah. They keep marching around saying the walls are going to fall down. But God is not a man that he should lie. When God says it, shall he not do it? On the seventh day, and on, I'm about to shout, Brother Dana, on the seventh day and on the seventh time around, wow, praise God Almighty, the walls came down. I'm talking to somebody, you have some walls that need to come down. Do you hear what I'm saying? I want to encourage you in this faith message. Raise up your hand with me right now. Raise it up in the name and praise God anyhow. Let somebody call you crazy. Let somebody call you radical in your faith. But radical miracles need a radical faith. Praise God that it's already done. Believe when you can't even see it. Obey when you don't understand it. Give when you do not have it. Persist when you don't feel like it. And yes, keep on thanking God because the just shall live by faith. My goodness, I feel like running around this platform right now. I'll tell you, faith is alive in your heart. And I believe miracles are just around the corner. Father, in the name of Jesus, before we go our separate ways, I invite you to stretch your hands out to me right now. Stretch your hands out if you would. Yes. I agree with you in prayer for those things that others say are impossible. There's always doubters. But I'm here to tell you to doubt your doubts and believe your big God. He can do it. I come into agreement with you right now that God will exceed all of your expectations in the name of Jesus as you understand and put into practice the kind of faith that works. Thank you so much for being with us. May the Lord bless you, empower you, open up doors for you that no man can shut, give you the desires of your heart. And yes, may he bless and keep you May his face always shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. I declare it in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Join us Sunday in person or virtually. We are glad to stay connected to you, our family. Have a blessed rest of the day.